guys and welcome back to the channel daughter of increase my name is daisy for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video and i post new videos every tuesday thursday and saturday all about my faith god christ and expanding the kingdom of god in today's video i'm super super excited about it this will most likely be a reading vlog depending on if this is what i think it is and i think this is what i think it is so i have two packages here this one i think is what i've been waiting on and then this one so i'm gonna open those let's get to these packages so i'm gonna start off with this one first this is not any type of it's not christian related but it is clean historical fiction um for a blog tour and i read a book from this author which i really did enjoy so i got another book from her okay so i also got another two more bookmarks from her so two more bookmarks from her and that is awesome I think this is a new series from her. Yeah, this might be a new series from this author that she is writing. And her books are really small and short. Yeah, so this is the first book in the Wallflowers of West Lane. I did read her Ladies of Virtue book, um, which is... This is a lady's past, is what that is called. And it's in her Evertone Domestic Society. And it was pretty good. So I decided to go with this. They're quick, short, clean, historical romance reads. This one is The Earl Not Taken. And I really just love the cover of this. So we have that book. And it is signed from the author, which I love. Like I said, I love when authors take the time to sign the books that are sent to me. So that is sent for review. But I got this book from Bethany House. And I think, I think this is book four in one of my favorite series. Right. oh my god this is it okay 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 ah, okay so yes it was i'm like okay so you guys know i love me some tessa abshar and then right under tessa it's gonna be connie then cassette and i literally own her entire out from egypt trilogy um i started out with her cities of refuge series which is a light on the hill shut up the most high and until the mountains fall I received review copies for A Light on the Hill and Shelter of the Most High, and then I joined the blog tour for Until the Mountains Fall, and it was a trilogy at first, but she made one more book. It's coming out on March 3rd, so by the time you're watching this video, it's the day of the release, so happy release day! But, um, yeah, so first we got a bookmark, which is so cute. Here is Tarza, who is the youngest daughter of Mariah and Derek, and if you've read the series, you know, um, but we have that, and then... <laughs> oh so cute so i do have my bookmark from um where is it don't want to mix things up here it is i do have my bookmark from um until the mountains fall so i'm definitely going to eliminate this baby um and then i have a small note from the uh, it's not a note it's a sticker <gasps> so i have a book plate that's signed oh from her yes i love it um but it's here like flames in the night oh my god this is the fourth and final book in the cities of refuge series i'm not ready to say goodbye to mariah and derek i'm just not i'm not ready at all so i'm gonna start reading this today probably i, I really want to make this a one day reading vlog like i legit just want to sit down and just read this for the rest of the night it's it's what time is it it's 1 18 i just want to read this for the rest of the evening like that's the plan i'm gonna try to read this in one day but if i can't it's okay but it's here guys it's here and i'm sad it's this one has a map did the other ones have maps i don't know but it has a map so i am going to actually i'm probably not going to start reading until three it's 119 right now um so right now i'm actually watching genevieve maurick's um reading blog for the end of the magi which i did a did i do a reading blog i don't think i did a reading blog did i no i did do a reading blog for end of the magi but i'm, I'm watching hers right now um, so I'm going to watch hers, clean up my room, catch up on my devotional for the day, because I'm doing this as a devotional reading, and then about 2.30ish, 3 o'clock, I'll come back and read, and I'll show you guys all of the other three books in this series. <sighs> it's here, so I'm going to start today, but I'm going to come back after I clean up my room just a little bit, just a little bit, and that dress over there, can you see that, that? And the black dress right there. I'm going to wear that tomorrow, Sunday, for church with some red shoes. Um, I don't know if I'm going to wear that or not. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to come back to you guys when I get ready to read. And I'm close this. I'm going to open this curtain and come back when I'm ready to read. So, yeah. I'll come back shortly. 
Okay, guys, so I'm back. Um, it's currently 3.28. I took some time because I really dove into this and listened to the audiobook a little slower. Um, it was pretty good. Chapter 6 was um, why what keeps men from waiting chapter five was on what keeps women from waiting um i learned a lot from chapter six focused on the men but um it was like i said focused on men so i have about three chapters left in this book and i'll be done with it so i should be done with this book um by tuesday wednesday um so that's great but we are finally going to dive into <laughs> this gorgeous baby oh my gosh she is gorgeous she is gorgeous so much um like flames in the night book four in the cities of refuge um, and before I dive into reading the back and everything like that, um, I do have me a latte cappuccino type of drink right here. It's uh, vanilla caramel flavored. So good. Let me turn my diffuser off real quick because it might be loud. Um, I have my diffuser going with this scent. I don't remember where I got this from. I either picked this up from my local Rite Aid or I got it from Walmart. I can't remember, um, but it's essential oil for aromatherapy this one is called spiritual it's bergamot clove and lavender and lavender is literally just lavender um this is literally one of my favorite scents i had bought three of these and i kept this smells so good um but um i have this one and then i have another one called relaxation this one is cedarwood lavender and lavender lavender is a form of lavender um so when i looked it up so this one is good and there was another one i bought can't remember the name of that one but i gave that one to my mom and um they just all smell good and i'm just in a mood for something relaxing so i have my diffuser going um but so this like i said is book four in cities of refuge and um before you read this book there are four other books i would recommend you read i don't really think you need to if you don't want to if you would just want to jump into the book you can but um i do have a reading blog for the third book which is until the mountains fall so just click the honest queen to go watch that reading blog i don't think i have a reading blog for the other ones but i did do a video on how i read my biblical fiction books in which i was reading shelter of the most high so you can click the on screen to go watch that video i am going to do an updated how i read biblical fictions as well as how i do non-fiction so you guys can get more in depth of how i annotate but um this is book four so before you read this um again you don't have to read these four books but i highly recommend you do so um because it's crucial to understanding the characters especially mariah um as she is like the backbone of this series so the first book is going to be wings of the wind um this is book three in her out from egypt trilogy this is the first trilogy she came out with now I didn't read this trilogy until after I finished the first two books of the Cities of Refuge and then I went and got this series because I was in love with her book, uh, her writing. But um, this is book three in that series and again with that series you can read it out of order if you want to but um, I say definitely read this because this features Mariah when she's much younger um, and it shows the repercussions of something that happened when she was captured in Jericho. Um, so you get to see her at a younger age, more bubbly, you get to meet her brother, well not really meet her brother but... Um, you get to see her father and things like that. She's not a prominent character in this book, but um, she's important enough for you to read in this story so that you can see the difference between her and her younger years when she was bubbly and, you know, just fun and everything to up to the situation that happened with um, Jericho or in Jericho down to the changes in this book. So, um, again, I'm personally biased to this book like i said i read this right after i read the first two books in the cities of refuge and um, i'm biased because mariah's in it and i ship mariah i love her she's literally one of my favorite female characters um biblically biblical wise but um also this also features rahab so you get rahab's story as well towards the end and also because um there was something else oh i love alana and tobiah tobiah yeah tobiah um which are the main two characters in this the love interest um in this book and they're just amazing so this book gives me everything and more but mainly mariah okay mainly mariah then we have rahab and then we have the romance between alana and tobiah and i really do love um alana in this book but this definitely like i said um you definitely want to read this because it does have mariah as a character in here and um, it's just amazing it's amazing so that's book three of her first trilogy um and then we go into the actual cities of refuge so first of all let me just say this is stunning i love the blues and the spines um the covers are all stunning um i'm gonna actually throw an image up right in front of my face so you guys can see how they all look together these covers are amazing i like i said previously in other videos i just love biblical fiction for the fact that they know how to put a human face on a cover and not make it look crazy okay 
and secular books, um, they be looking a hot ratchet mess. But biblical fiction knows how to do it, so I commend biblical fiction authors, these publishing companies, and these people who make these covers. I mean, just stunning. So the first book, um, in the Cities of Refuge, is going to be A Light on the Hill, book one, and this centers around Mariah and Derek as well as Aton, Aton, Aton. Y'all know the struggle of me saying this boy name. I gotta struggle with his name, but um, it centers around him and well them. And you really get to see the repercussions of what happened in Wings of the Wind. Um, they give you glimpses of what happened. They don't tell you in depth, which is why I say definitely read Wings of the Wind before reading this. Um, because you get the full in-depth story. But um, Mariah in this is a lot more quiet. She's a lot more reserved. She's shy. Um, she allows fear to strip her of just living free freely. Um, and she is, I believe, part Egyptian. If I'm not mistaken, she's part Egyptian, but um, it follows her, and basically there is a death that takes place um, concerning her betrothed, and I'm not going to say what it was, but there was a death that took place that was not her fault, um, but people blame her because of her skills and stuff, and um, it's not to the end that you find out exactly who did it and what happened, and you're just like, what? But um, this was amazing. There, The romance between Derek and uh, Mariah. <laughs> is everything to me so yeah this is basically their romance with their first almost their first son because at the end she ends up adopting um Aton. book one then you go into book two shelter of the most high this is years later uh i don't know how many years later because in the first book he was in the, i think the single digit numbers and this Aton is about 20 years old and um this is you know, following the legacy of Mariah and Derek. So they do have other children. They have Aton, who is one of their sons. I believe he is the first son that they adopt, um, but he's not the firstborn. But they treat him like their firstborn, which I adore. Just love it. Um, but it's his romance with Sophia. Sophia is part uh she's a daughter of a pagan high priest. Um, and she is taken to the, the shores of uh, Canaan, where she just has to live, basically. And she ends up going to one of the cities of refuge and living there because she's found by um, Derek and Baz. And I love me some Baz. Baz is hilarious. Ah, Baz is a friend of um, Derek's from this book. <sighs> okay, so, and I'm going to talk about the city of refuge once I finish talking through the books. But um, this one just follows basically the romance of Aton and Sophia in this book. But, of course, you get the glimpses of Mariah and Derek and their legacy and just we love. Then we have book three, which follows um, Mariah's other son. She had three sons. No, she has four. Four sons, um, but three biological sons. So her first actual son died. She has her middle son and then her younger son. Um, and then Aton, of course, which is not her biological son, but she still considers him her biological son. Um, so her middle son, uh, his name is Malachi. So this follows Malachi and Rivka, and we do get glimpses of them in um, Shelter of the Most High. Um, but I wasn't 100% attached to them in this book just because... Sorry, um, I had got some sunflower seeds from the stout, so my brother bought it to me. But, um, yeah, this follows Rivka and Malachi. Um, Rivka is the daughter of... She's just a little girl that used to hang around in their house all the time. And Rivka was patrolled to the oldest son, but, um, something happened with the oldest son, and then in turn, because of the laws, I forgot where, and I think it's in Deuteronomy, the law about, um, the wife having to then marry the next son and giving birth to a child that would then have the name of that son that died. That law can't remember it's on the screen um it follows that kind of like thing and it also deals with um prodigal daughters um so it takes the prodigal son and from luke i think it's luke 5 if i'm not mistaken luke 5 or luke 11 i'll put the correct uh scripture on the screen but um it takes the prodigal son and flips it around to prodigal daughter and um i enjoyed this book but i wasn't uh, completely attached just because i didn't really know much about rivka and malachi like they were there were glimpses of them from shelter of the most high but i feel like if they were more of an impact in the story of them as characters and more development then i would have been attached to this but i wasn't 100 percent attached but it's still a great read i did not read the physical book i did read the e arc if you guys watch as i watch my reading blog um you'll see that i read the e arc so i do want to reread this and tab it up of course we have to tab so yeah and then we follow the youngest i believe she's the baby girl she probably isn't though there's probably another child beneath her another daughter can't remember mariah and derek out here having legacies okay they got children for days um but this follows tarza in the events that happened after this book and in this book in that epilogue there is something that takes place okay so we have this which basically follows their life after 
the event of and i can't say it because it's gonna spoil the main thing like about this book but um it literally follows like a couple years after the events of this book but um the cities of refuge uh i learned about the cities of refuge from reading a lot on the hill and then i went to actually study it. and if i'm not mistaken it's in joshua in numbers um they're basically six is it six or seven? I think six cities that um, God told the people, the tribes to create, which would be a place that people could go um, when they were considered manslayers. So a manslayer was someone who killed someone by accident. So like the, the example I gave previous in another video was like, say you're out, you know, playing with your friends and you throw a rock and they don't catch it quick enough and it like hits them in the temple and they die. You didn't purposely kill that person, but um, you're still considered a killer. So you're a manslayer. And then when you're a manslayer there's literally only two options one you run to the nearest city of refuge for a fair trial or you get killed by the kinsman redeemer and that person <laughs> they alpha blood all day every day okay but um that's basically what that is so with the events that took place in a light on the hill with the death that happened in the murder um is basically mariah rushing to get to the city of kadesh she was actually supposed to go i think to a different city of refuge but she ends up going to kadesh um because of some drama just read the book it's so good read it um but some drama ensues so she ends up in kadesh and she basically has to stay in kadesh um over that murder that happened and it wasn't her fault but they were she was blamed for it she took the blame for it you gotta read it um so she basically for these three books right here okay these three books, they are living in Kadesh, okay? And um, it is not till the end of book three that you find out some stuff. And um, the thing with being in a city of refuge when you're a manslayer, you have to stay there until the high priest that put you there um, dies. And when they die, you're basically free. So <laughs> the events, I kind of like spoiled it somewhat, but the events that happened at the end of book three just got me so excited. So <sighs> I know I just went on a ramble, but I felt like I had to really fully explain this to you guys for you to understand okay but um i'm going to quickly read the back of the book um actually there's something i want to check because i didn't see maps in the other oh there were maps yeah there definitely were maps i just didn't pay them in mine <laughs> was there a map in it yeah okay i thought the map was like new to this book but it's literally the same map in all the books um so here it is and it shows the different cities of refuge. Um, so you have Hebron, Shechem, Remeth, Gilead, Golan, and Kadesh. There should be another one. Right? I know it ain't five. It's supposed to be six. One, two. Oh, Bazaar. So there's six. So Hebron, Bazaar, Shechem, um, Ramoth, Gilead, Golan, and Kadesh. That's still not... Am I not counting two, four? So, okay, it's six. Whatever. Don't hit me no more. Um... So yeah, so now I'm just going to read the back of the book for you guys to get a synopsis. So it says, strong will Terzo wants to join her people in driving the enemy, the enemy from the land of Israel and undergoes training for a secret mission inside the stronghold of Shechem. But soon after she has infiltrated the ruthless Aramean commander's kitchen, she makes a reckless decision that puts her and her allies in grave danger. Fresh off the battlefield, Liam returns home to discover his beloved daughter is dead after his vow to hunt down her killer leads to months of fruitless pursuit his last hope is in a family connection that comes with strings attached strings that force him to pose as a mercenary and rescue an infuriating woman who refuses to leave her mission uncompleted when an opportunity to pave a path to a hebrew victory arises can terza and can terza convince liam to fight alongside her in the refuge city of her birth or will Liam, thirst for revenge, outweigh his duty to his people, his God, and the woman he's come to love? So, we already know that Terza is a little older. Because, um, you know, this is literally years later, of course. Because, basically, Terza is a little older. Um, and I guess she goes to the stronghold of Shechem, which is... Shechem has its own city of refuge. So, it's going to be interesting to see if there's a different city of refuge mentioned in here. Um, but, I'm excited. <laughs>
Hey guys, so I just finished the live session with um, Jenna for our spring book, I mean our winter book club pick from the Biblical Fiction Buffs, and it was the end of the, the end of the Magi, and it was great. I took a few notes, not extensive, um, little bits and bobs and pieces. I'm gonna keep it in the book so that I know how many times I read it. I want to keep track of how many times I read books, um, and you know things like that. But um, so it's. 558 so it was about an hour long which was awesome uh we did discuss the three picks for the spring and all of them i've read all of them i love so the three picks i think uh, i believe she said daughter of rome by tessa abshar um isaiah's daughter and isaiah's legacy both by nisu andrews and i adore isaiah's daughter so i might be voting for that because i do own the physical copy of both books and i've read both on ebook so i want to reread the physical form so that i can annotate so i think i'm gonna vote for isaiah's daughter as much as i love tessa um isaiah's daughter of the three is my favorite um so i'm probably gonna vote for that when voting goes live but we're gonna get back into this i do want to show you guys that i actually wrote out a prayer on a sticky note i'm gonna like probably fix that but i wrote out a prayer because it was something that um on page 19 terza was terza was talking about mariah and how mariah had a way of cutting to the bone with such a gentleness that she could not help but to welcome the decision no matter how much it stung and that mariah always spoke the truth so i just wrote a prayer out i said heavenly father I pray that I learn to speak in a way that cuts down to the bone with gentleness that others welcome the incision of my words. I desire to speak truth seasoned with compassion and steeped in love. May my words be pleasing to you to edify your people and that of myself. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And I want to be able to speak the truth in love with compassion. Um, and even though love and compassion are like almost the same thing i think of them mentally as different things um and then i want to also be that way not just with others but with myself because i'm pretty hard on myself um quite a lot and i don't like that i want to make sure that my words are edifying to people and that it um brings or helps to promote growth and not just others but also in myself so i think i'm gonna start doing that i normally don't write out prayers i normally just like mark things that i want to pray but i think physically writing it out and keeping it in the book um is going to be great and i'm actually going to actually write that out and stick it on my prayer wall because you guys know i'm still working on my prayer wall it's been like two weeks i said i was working on it still haven't done anything so that's going to be like a whole video i'm going to do showing you guys how i work my prayer wall but um yeah i wrote that out so i'm only on page 22 right now and um Derek is speaking to terza about basically marrying and she was married to elia I think that's how you say his name. He was the only son. Um, so she went back to live with Derek and them. And um, she was married for two years and then he died. But she also went through, I believe, two or three miscarriages. It's kind of hard to determine because of how it's written. It says that um, it says that Mariah knew about the first two times she lost the baby. But the last one she kept, um, even from her husband. So yeah, she had three miscarriages. So I think it's hard. Um, I noticed that a lot of biblical fiction talks about miscarriages. Um, and being barren because that was like a huge thing in this time you know having children specifically sons was um looked at as like wealthy and making you um very successful in that time i mean it's crazy how like things have changed because now having children is looked at as a bad thing <laughs> but um yeah so i'm 23 pages and so like i said the goal right now is to get to 100 I want to get to 254, but it's probably going to end up being a three-day reading vlog or four-day because I'm probably not going to be able to read much tomorrow since I have church. But um, right now, the goal is to get to page 131. So um, like I said, I'll come back after I get through chapter 5 with my thoughts. Um, so let's commence the reading. Okay, remember how I mentioned that, that I feel like people should read Wings of the Wind? You're definitely going to need to read this because Alana and Tobias, they come back into play. 
heavily. I'm excited. Um, we are introduced to Liam in chapter four. Um, well, okay, chapters two and three is basically Terza coming up with this crazy idea. She's basically a mini Alana, um, and I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't want to really spoil it. So she a, she a savage, low key. Um, so I'm loving Terza. I adored her as like a baby, and I'm loving her even more now. Like I have a true connection with her because I enjoyed her growth. Um, but now Liam, I think that's how you spell his, say his name, Liam, L-I-Y-A-M, Liam, um, <laughs> his mother and father are Tobiah and Alana. I'm excited. It, <laughs> I'm excited. So, yeah, I'm on page 37 right now. I'm going to continue reading. Um, I'm just, <laughs> my heart is happy. I'm excited. I'm like, I'm ecstatic, you guys have no idea, because I love, like I said, Alana and Tobiah. As much as I adore Mariah more, I love the story of Alana and Tobiah and their marriage and their relationship. And it, their romance was a marriage of convenience that um, turned into more, so I definitely would recommend it, but you definitely need to now. I mean, you don't have to, because they pretty much explain things that went on in um, the book Wings of the Wind, but you definitely need to read this read that book because mm -mm. do, do you see i'm jumbling up my words i'm excited i'm excited all right guys so i'm a little bothered <laughs> just a little bit but um it's 907 as you can see um i had dinner didn't really touch because i was trying to read this but i'm reading it really slowly um i got to chapter seven so i'm on chapter seven now i'm gonna stop though sadly so this might be a three-day reading vlog or four day um because I have a lot of work to do right now. <laughs> I have some administrative stuff that I need to do before I forget. I need to upload a video on my book channel. I also need to rehearse the four songs we're singing for praise and worship. And I have to dance tomorrow as well. So I need to rehearse that because I just got the song. So I'm going to have to end this reading vlog here for today. But I'll have clips tomorrow of me possibly reading in the car. <laughs> Hey guys, so um, as you saw from the clip of me reading, um, it's Sunday, February 23rd, and I have completed the first 132 pages, 131 pages, so I'm on chapter 16, um, and this is so good, I am loving this a lot more than I did with Until the Mountains Fall, we love Terza, we love Liam. Um, I'm loving the connection of Alana and Tobiah coming back into play. <sighs> My heart is happy. Um, I'm excited for the romance that is going to be brewing between Liam and Terza. I think it's going to be quite interesting. Um, and I think it's going to be sweet, especially since Alana and Mariah are basically like besties. So, yeah. So, um, let me talk about... Etienne. Etan, I always say his name wrong. I think it's Etienne. Um, I think it's Etan. I'm going to get the pronunciation right. I always forget. I'm going to watch Connie's video. But um, he's he he's more of a savage now. Um, there was a scene. I got to find it. Got to find that scene because it cracked me up. Yeah, so... Um, a10 when he was younger he learned to um work with metals and make weapons so that's like his thing that in a slingshot um and that was like from book one and two uh but there was a scene where liam is talking to them i think they 
trying to figure out. Mm, was this before or after? Okay, so this is before the things are revealed about Teresa being with the Aramines. But, um, you know, Eton is speaking to Liam. And he's bas they're basically asking him like how he kept the foundry a secret and whatnot. Um... And Derek, being all prideful and proud of his boys, is talking. So there was a situation where um, they're basically getting Hebrews to come and, and train. But they're using his grandfather's vineyard as like a cover-up. So the Hebrews are coming to sort of learn to work in the vineyard, but they're really training. And um, of all the, all the years or months they've been doing this, they've only been caught once, I think. And um, they said, this is what he said. So, who is this speaking? This is Malachi. So, Malachi is like, yeah, the vineyard has been an excellent cover-up. Years ago, we secured permission, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, they only had um, once been forced to deal with a soldier who stumbled across Aton teaching the slain to a group of Benjamites out in the woods. <laughs> so, Aton decides to, um, you know, speak. And he's like, but he really should have been paying attention where he was walking. A man can trip and fall over the edge of a ravine far too easily at twilight. And I'm just like, he's a savage. He's savage. Because um, Liam is like, the ruthless edge to his statement was not surprising. Like, to see my pumpkins grow up from, like, book one to book four is amazing. I love Malachi. Malachi is now commander of um, the forces. So he's doing his job. Mariah is pretty much laid back. Derek is taking a lot more of a role in this book, um, clearly as a father. Um, but I'm enjoying them. So let's talk about Terza. I don't want to talk about Liam first. Let's talk about Liam. So Liam has obviously lost his wife, um, went to war, came back, and found out his daughter, seven-year-old daughter, was killed. Um, she was killed by a traitor who was riding his horse and didn't pay attention and just ran over his baby girl um that whole scene was like real sad so i'm not gonna explain any more than that but you gotta like read the book to know like in depth but um so he's on a hunt seeking revenge trying to find this man to be the blood avenger which we all know the story of the blood avenger i will leave it the scripture on the screen i think it's in deuteronomy um i think it's deuteronomy about the blood avengers and stuff like that um so that's pretty much what's going on with him and he's like just bent on i'm sorry if i'm looking this way my head is starting to hurt but um he is he's bent on finding this 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 man and killing him like that's his goal he wants to find this man and kill him as the blood avenger which is definitely his right but um liam then comes across um derek and them and finds out that they are you know, they're the friends of his parents. And, um, you know, he speaks to them, Derek and the boys, telling them, you know, like, help me find this man. And they were just like, no, we can't help you. And then there was a scene where Derek is like, you know, we understand. We definitely, I'm trying to find it. But I can't right now. But there was a scene when Derek is like, um, we understand how you feel, but... We pray. Okay, here we go. It's on page 93 if you have the book. But it's, he was like, We truly empathize with your loss, Liam. Please believe me. We have, we all have daughters whom we would fight to the death for, but you have stumbled across the wrong family to help you perpetuate a blood feud. And um, the reason why he said that and why the boys feel some type of way is because if you guys read A Lot on the Hill, there was a situation with um, a blood avenger. I'm not going to give more detail. You have to read book one to know what I'm talking about because the blood avenger situation takes place from books one to three so um it's it, it's a lot to that which i definitely thought was a good touch um i'm loving the bits and bobs and pieces of uh getting the the, the information or history from wings of the wind involved in this book i think it's amazing um liam seems to be a well-rounded man but he is solely stuck on um, being a blood avenger, finding this man that killed his daughter and killing him. So he's like single minded right now, which is bad. Um, and there were some things like he was saying, like the, the person that his cousin knew long ago died when his daughter died. And I'm just like, sometimes when we lose loved ones, I'm trying to find where I wrote it at, but, um, yeah, sometimes we lose ourselves when a loved one dies. You literally just become a different person. You don't recognize who you are. Um, then as far as Tarza go, I am enjoying her um, a lot. She is very much a mini Alana. 
she's a Mariah and an Alana combined together. She's not as bold as Alana, and she's not as quiet as Mariah, but she's like a nice mix of the two, and I'm loving it. Um, she is with the Arameans in the commander's house, and she's pretending she doesn't understand their language, but she's cooking these lavish meals to feed to the commander, um, just so that she can get some information. So, there was a scene with, um, the two guys that were there with her. They got captured, um, and some stuff went down on that, so I ain't gonna talk about that, but they, they got captured, captured and were, and, and was killed. Um, it, it's heartbreaking. So basically, Terza was there by herself, um, and then Liam was enlisted, pretty much, to go save her, and, um, they have finally met. Um, Liam basically plays the look of a Moab. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm in the car in Harlem, so I'm looking all around, but, yeah. Um, so far, I'm really loving it. Um, I'm probably not gonna get any more reading done today. It's not gonna happen, um, cause I have a really bad headache. <laughs> really bad headache. But, um, yeah, I'm up to chapter 16, and I'm really enjoying the characters, um, so much. I'm enjoying the story, I'm enjoying the visitation of Alana and Tobiah in this, and I'm just, I'm overjoyed with happiness, and I can't wait to finish this. I'm gonna try to finish this tomorrow, probably not, like I said, it's probably just gonna be a four-day reading vlog. Um, I try to keep my reading vlogs to three days minimum, but this one, Sundays are pretty hard for me because I do go to multiple churches um so yeah but um i'll come back to you guys tomorrow with more information but i'm loving this book like flames in the night is amazing and i just seeing my babies all grown up with children of their own is amazing i don't even know how old mariah and derek possibly are like they're probably like in their 60s or 70s or something like that because malachi is in his 30s well, he's past his 30s. I still don't even know how old um, Terza is. She's in her 20s, though. So. But there's a, there's a, a thing where they talk about Malachi being over 30. So if he's over 30, that means um, that Aton has to be in his 40s, which therefore means that Mariah and Derek have to be like somewhere in their 60s or 70s. Don't know. Don't care. I'm loving this book. I am just... Oh, we love do you do you see they did a phenomenal job with this series man making these books covers are gorgeous but yeah i'm gonna come back to you guys tomorrow because uh I, I'm, my head is starting to throb again um i still haven't gone to the doctor i know i said that i was gonna go this past weekend but i still didn't go i thought i was good but apparently you know <laughs> wake up on a sunday and we not good so we gonna have to figure that out i'm gonna have to really force myself to go to the doctor this week but um i should be leaving from this church soon to go to my church um but i'm gonna drink the rest of my mango smoothie probably read a middle grade book because i do have a middle grade book with me um i'll listen my book bag back there but um yeah i'm enjoying it so far definitely looking like a five star read for sure um 131 pages in five star read for sure but um loving it loving it loving it and that's it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Morning, guys. Um, so it is Monday, the 24th, 9-14. Um, I just took some time to get myself dressed. Normally, um, in the mornings, I get my son together. I throw on some sweats or some leggings, and I rush out the door, and then I come home, clean myself up, and then get dressed and clean the room. Um, pretty much that's how I like to do things. I have me a vanilla caramel cappuccino latte i don't even know what these things are called they're from maxwell they come in a little container so i don't really know i just know the flavor is vanilla caramel and i mix it with a little bit of french vanilla i did five no six cubes of sugar in here so i got that going also have me some oatmeal here um it's just brown sugar brown maple sugar oatmeal with three packs of sugar um and some agave syrup in here and um, right now, I'm actually watching um, the video that Morgan Tracy J posted, her morning devotional routine. Um, so that's what I'm watching. And I'm going to do a video about the Christian YouTubers that I really enjoy watching because Morgan Tracy J is definitely one of them. Um, I 
pretty much like to binge watch her videos together. I won't watch her videos for a few weeks and then I'll like binge watch them while I'm doing like some type of studying or anything like that. But um, the plan for today is also to tackle the rest of this because this is day, this is supposed to be day two, but it's day three. And for today, the goal is to get to 254 pages. Um, so I'm going to actually split that up. So it's chapters. Let me see. I'm trying to see by chapters. So that's 30, 16 to 30. So let's do some math right now. So I'm going to try to do this by seven chapters. So if I do 16 to 23, I'm trying to see now. That's 22, 23. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to split this in half. That way. I'm not solely stuck. So I have my green tab. So I'm just going to take this pink one and stick it here in the middle. So that I know that's like when I get halfway through. So now it looks like this. Um, the green tab is where I need to be. But the pink tab is like in between. I'm going to try to split this up today. Because I do have like I said a lot of work administrative wise to do. Hey guys. So it's 9.37. Um, I just finished all my oatmeal. And I watched two videos. I watched the video from Morgan Tracy J and then I watched the claim your crown challenge video um from Tara Lynn I'll leave links so you can just click the on screen and go watch those or probably links down below I'm not sure how many links I'll be able to make in this video but um I took my glasses off for the purpose of like talking with you guys because if I don't you'll see the glare um but I do want to start reading um so yes like flames in the night book four of cities of refuge and it's just my heart i'm thoroughly enjoying this right now so i'm going to read um chapters 16 to 23 i want to try to read it in 25 minutes probably not gonna happen but um before i do that i do want to show you guys the other prayer so i mentioned previous that i what i'm doing now is anytime i mark anything as uh, um relatable or personal which i use brown for um, I want and pay my hair on mine. My hair is like struggling and I need to go to the hair salon. So I'm working on that soon. But um, anytime I underline it, I want to turn it into a prayer because I don't want to just keep it as is. I want to be able to pray it over my life. So this was the first one that I wrote out. And then there was another one that I had marked, but I didn't write the prayer out. So I'm, I wrote the prayer out. Okay guys, so I finished um, and I figured out how to change the time. I'm dumb, but I figured out how to change the timing. But I read up to chapter 23 um, and oh my god, so a lot took place. It was like a real fast paced sort of like seven chapters. I was like, wait, 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 wait if you saw my facial expressions. Um, so basically, I'll d okay, where do I even begin? Okay, so I'm going to start with the cute scene that I was like, oh my god, that's so cute. Where is it at? So basically, um, Liam is pretending to be a Moabite. Um, he went in to go and retrieve Tirza. Um, but, you know, he has to be a little bit more hands-on with her and a little bit more um, aggressive because he's pretending to be a Moabite, obviously, and to make sure that they don't get caught. So there's a scene where he's like, he forced her to leave her job, leave what she was doing cooking to go with him basically for us a scheme but um there was a scene where he sort of yanked her neck because he saw one of the the dudes coming he basically had to still missives from one of the guys so he had to be a little bit more aggressive and yanked her neck and then um he was doing that but not putting too much pressure on her but made it seem like he was doing it purposely to the guy and then it said i aimed a menacing grin at him I'm sorry, I aimed a menacing grin at her, pulled her head even farther back, exposing more of her slender neck. Now, what got me was the next part where it says, I briefly considered brushing my nose against the enticing length of her smooth skin, but immediately tossed the instinct aside, thankful she could not divine my thoughts. And I think it's so cute that even though they have to be in this pretend sort of master-slave kind of 
um, relationship for the simple fact of having to trick Bersam, I think that's how you say his name, and pretending that um, Liam is a Moabite. I just think it's cute that, you know, even though he is, he's in this position where they both understand that this is a scheme, he's starting to reap feelings for her. Um, and then, I think her name is Odelia. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but the little girl that clung on to Tirza, um, she saw him and started hitting him with her two fists and yelling at him to make him leave um, Tirza alone. So I think Odelia is cute, but I still think it's something fishy about this little girl. I'm hoping it's not, but I feel like there's something up with this little girl, okay? Because the minute Tirza came in, she was like clinging to Tirza and whatnot but um she decided she wanted to help out so she started helping them um tirza and uh liam with being a spy and whatnot um then khalid khalid is one of bersam's i think commanders and he's just a douchebag he's so annoying um liam beat him up already so now he hates liam even more and I, it's one of those things where like you've known the command you, you've known your boss for years and then someone else new comes in and gets all the attention khalid has become very much petty um so yeah the kings from um edom and moab have come to uh shakem with bersam so they've been talking so pretty much they have made this completely easy for Tirza to do her job, which I think is funny. Um, then there's a scene where they were getting ready to leave, but um, Khalid came through and snatched up um, Tirza, which that whole scene kind of irritated me, but in the end, he ends up dead. I'm not going to say how he died, but in the end, he dies, um, and Tirza escapes. Um, I'm not going to explain any more than that. You have to read it to know. Um, she does escape. She does get a chance to get home to her brother and, and her father with the missive. Um, Liam stays behind. But, again, it's quick pace. It's fast. So, things just go and go and go. And you're like, wait, 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 what? Huh? What? So, I love it. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to give all the details. But I will say, um, the fight against Bersam, Bersam, whatever his name is, um, is over. They have basically taken back Shakem. Um, and... Now it's about to be a war because Kushan is like pissed off. So um literally about halfway through you get through the main portion of the story um concerning Tirza and Shikim and all that. So then you have the next half, which is this half, which I'm guessing is gonna focus on Kushan. So I do have chapters twenty-four to thirty to read, but I'm going to get to those chapters later. I am going to now take my time. I'm gonna put this down. Okay guys, so um, I did read what I needed to read. I'm on page 278. I did read a bit ahead. Um, chapter 34 is what I have left and I already split up tomorrow's reading into two parts again. But I am loving this. I got Nessa back and if you did not read Until the Mountains Fall, you will not know who Nessa is. But we get Nessa and her, her children back. Um, they are... There was... There was a marriage of convenience, pretty much, in order for them... Hold on, let me close my door. Okay, but there was a marriage of convenience between Liam and Terza for the simple fact of her wanting to be a spy in Kadesh. So they're currently in Kadesh, and she's working at the inn that she was raised. So it's kind of like nostalgic to revisit the home that Mariah and Derek like started with towards the end of A Light on the Hill and it's just blending everything so seamlessly and I'm just waiting for the moment where Alana and Mariah get to like see each other. My heart. <laughs> My heart. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm loving how the books are all connecting from um, Wings of the Wind, which is in book, which is book three of the Alpha Egypt series, to all the other three books in this series. It's just, <sighs> I'm loving it. But I'm done for my for today. Morning, guys. It is 8:48 Tuesday, February 25th, 
And this is going to be the final day of the reading vlog. I'm going to complete two books today. I'm going to complete... Oh, let me put my phone on vibrate. Sorry. I'm going to be finishing The Weight today. This is the last chapter that I have to do today of this. And I have thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, it's been such a joy to read. Such um, an inspiration. Such a motivator to read. Um, and I think a lot of the things in here are very useful. So I've been loving this. It's probably going to get a 5 or a 4.5 star rating from me. Um, but I need to finish that today. And then... We're going to tackle the last hundred or so pages, right? Yeah, we're going to tackle the last hundred pages today, you guys. I'm not ready. Alec has returned. And Alec is the son of Barasam. The dude that Liam killed. He's that dude's son. So, yeah. And they're in Kadesh right now. And they're, like, married. But it's a marriage of convenience. Because they they're, they're thinking about divorcing after their like their work is over they're spies in kadesh right now and um mm, my heart is not ready so yeah it's 8 53 so about 9 15 ish i want to start reading because i do have um well not 9 15 10 o'clock i'm gonna start reading because i actually have some work i need to do right now um today is tuesday i need to edit a video that i said i was gonna edit but i didn't edit yesterday yeah so i'm, I'm gonna make me some coffee um and then i'm gonna come back and at like 10 o'clock Okay, so you guys know I'm a romance reader. I read romance books. I love romance books. Um, but Connie can write some sweet, cute romances and make my heart flutter. So, okay, this is on page, um, it starts on page 282. Um, so basically, they are back at, um, like I said, they're in Kadesh. And she is, she being Tirza, is working at the inn, but the inn is at her mother's place. Um, that they were raised so she goes into um the orchard i think it is that Gidel, which was the first born of mariah but her second son because it's etienne it's then Gidel and then malachi if you have not read until the mountains fall read it to know about Gidel. but she is um at his little his bee bee thingy I don't know he had a bunch of bees that's all i'm gonna say i don't really remember what it was but um they do mention it in the book and i was like oh brings back memories of that whole thing um and then you know her and um liam are talking so liam immediately starts to think about the first kiss that he gave her and that first kiss was when they were in um inside the walls of shechem where he had to force force himself on her to pretend like he was a moab um or whatever and they're talking, and she's like, well, I want to know more about your wife, because I want more. I want more of you. I was like, oh, that was sweet. That's when it started, and then he got excited. So then we fast forward. They're, they're sharing each other's stories. So he's telling her about his wife and how she died, um, and giving birth and all that. And then she, in turn, talks about her husband, Elia, Elia, I don't know how you say his name, um, and how um, she lost three of their children and how her husband was basically disappointed in her and for me i put that why do men get upset with women when they can't keep a baby to full term i don't think that's right i've always disliked that um i feel like you shouldn't blame a woman for that like th that's not her fault like it's one thing if she out here partying and drinking and all that but she just was living her normal life and she lost the baby so why would you get mad with her and then want to leave her but again, I understand that back in this time, their wealth and their success was based on how many sons they had. So I get it, but it still like makes me angry. Um, so then we get to the cute little romance scene here, right? So they're they're encouraging each other. Um, basically, he's like, "Well, is this why you push yourself so hard? Because you you she believes that she failed her husband at at not being able to hold their babies." Um, so you know he's encouraging her, and then she's encouraging him, and then. Then, <laughs> then, she, um, okay, so I'm going to read what it says. So it says, she closed the gap between us and lifted her hands to my cheeks. Standing on the tips of her toes, she whispered, her breath teasing my lips, and I want more. All restraint melted away by her words. I wrapped my arms around her body and dropped my mouth to hers, reveling in the honeyed sweetness of her yielding lips. Mine. My mind repeated over and over as I pulled her even closer. She responded by twining her arms behind my neck. This woman 
is mine. Then I finally came to my senses and lightly, slightly loosened my hold. Tears are giggled against my mouth, and then she peered at, at me with mischief in her golden brown eyes. <laughs> I mean, it may have been a marriage of convenience, but you definitely can tell there was an instant attraction between the two of them. But what I love is that even though Connie always has these romances where there's an instant attraction, it takes them a minute to build up that relationship for them to really want to kiss. And I just, I, I, I love, okay? I am, I'm gushing on the inside. I'm, 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 yeah. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a finish reading. I only, that was only one chapter. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a come back. Okay, guys, so. I'm going to read the last two chapters, which is chapter 46 and the epilogue. I no words. I'm I'm dumbfounded. I'm stupefied. I'm just this series has. Oh, sorry about my light. This series literally has been phenomenal for me from start to finish, even into Wings of the Wind. Book three in the Out from Egypt trilogy. Um, I just I don't have any tabs in here yet, but um, just know I have marked all up in this book as you can see. No, ta I have to add my tabs in here. Uh, this was brilliant, brilliant conclusion. I feel satisfied like a lot of the times when i read the the conclusion of a series i feel okay i feel good but i don't always feel satisfied like this ending was satisfying <laughs> like the way she wove wings of the wind and then the way she brought back the mention of Gadel and how she brought back nessa and raviv and I highly, highly recommend this series to you guys. Um, now, the only thing for me is I know that this does mention scripture, but I have not studied the book of Judges, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the references are from the book of Judges. So I am thinking of reading through Judges, um, not studying it, but once I read through it with my Bible reading plan that I'm doing for the year, that after I do that, I'll come back to this and be able to mark the scriptures. Because I think I only really marked down maybe four scriptures, and two of those scriptures are the scriptures that are in the beginning and the scripture that is at the end as well. And the end scripture is going to be Judges 3. The beginning scripture is also Judges 3. So... Um, I'm pretty sure this portion of the book takes place in between Judges 3, um, and you do get to see the other sort of cities, you get to see Hebron, you get to see, um, what is it, I'm going to the map, Shechem, because you go inside, they, they, they do visit Shechem, um, but at the time Shechem is taken over by King Gushan, there's Hebron, so the fact that you get the mention of the other cities of refuge and this book was phenomenal and i'm just like i'm mind blown i'm amazed i just five stars five stars five stars i love the sort of spy espionage aspect to it and in the back i'm um, in her author's note she does talk about how um what is it the israeli mossad and the cia were actively recruiting women 
Um, so I think that's like she really goes into depth about the character of Terza and Liam and uh, just to see Mariah and Derek in the form of their little girl Terza and it was like I really did love Terza a lot. Terza, Terza, I don't know. I enjoyed her a lot as a little girl. So um to finally like see them grow and it was a scene that like swooned swooned my heart oh and not to mention that um terza is pregnant so i might be a little a little upset because we don't get to see baby you know little baby liam terza but it's okay the fact that she was pregnant made me happy um but it's at the end towards the end um where derek and mariah are like standing they're back in kadesh they they basically won the war against Kushan and all that. They took back Kadesh and Derek and Mariah decided that they were going to go back to Kadesh to be the ones to minister to other manslayers that come into and to give them hope and stuff like that, which I thought was phenomenal. So the back where they where they basically started their family, which I think is so cute that it's like full circle back to book one where they first started. Um, but Mariah is like just thinking of all of her kids. She's She literally goes through each of her kids, like how Malachi and Abra, Abra we're always arguing and then, um, you know, making sure that Goodell's garden and orchard is fine. And then she talks about Chana learning to weave and then Tirza. And of course, we don't have to talk about Etienne. It's Etienne. 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 I, don't, I can't pronounce these names, okay? I'm sorry. But we all know that that's her baby boy. Like, he may not have came out of her womb, but he is truly their son in every single way. Again, if you read A Light on the Hill or Shelter of the Most High, you know what I mean. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of Malachi and Ripka. Um, I did, I believe I gave book three a four star rating or 4.5 star just because I wasn't fully really attached to the characters. But I find that I'm a lot more attached to them in this book because we got mention of them and, you know, they had their own book in book three. Now, Ripka didn't have a whole, like, a lot of scenes in this, but Malachi did and I just... I loved it. It was amazing. I'm gushing. I need to just sit a minute and just take in my thoughts because I don't even know how to like put my word, my thoughts into words. But I am done, you guys. I finished. It's 11:49, so I finished right before 12. Um, if you guys see 11:49, um, so I I just I can't wait for her next book, and she does have another book, a duology coming out, which I'm so excited for. Um, so I'll have a video on that coming soon with like my, um, favorite upcoming releases from my favorite authors, um, because I'm so excited for her new upcoming release. I saw the cover and it is so, so stunning. I think if you're part of her newsletter, you were able to see the cover, but, um, so stunning, you guys, so stunning. And I'm so excited for that. But, um, it's, it's just like, <sighs> I don't even know if this is like my favorite cover or not i'm not sure it could be i got like stains all over the cover from like lotion and vaseline but it's okay the end of a series i love mariah and derek if i had to rate these in order like books one through four a lot on the hill is definitely number one then i would say I probably would go with this as, like, my number two. But I love Etienne. Mm, yeah, this... Mm, yeah, this would probably be number two. So, it would be a light on the hill for me as number one, obviously. Um, then Light Flames in the Night. Then Shelter of the Most High. And then Until the Mountains Fall. That would be my, like, order. But I love the entire series. It's amazing. Phenomenal. And I'm sad it's over. I'm going to keep saying that. So I'm just going to get off this camera. Um, thank you guys for watching this reading vlog. I will have more reading vlogs coming. I want to try to at least record a reading vlog every other weekend. So that I can have at least two reading vlogs up for you. Um, and this is I like including like doing reviews and things like that. I do have a reading vlog coming for um, The Star of Persia by Jill Eileen Smith coming. So stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, that's it for this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.